Last week, whilst editing a video, I noticed something that caught my attention, just for a fleeting moment. In the corner of my eye, I saw a blur-like movement. At the time, I shrugged it off as nothing, until I investigated a little closer. Can you see what I missed? There is something faintly obvious if you look close enough. I may have stumbled across something that could have a huge impact on our ants. AK Colony, we have discovered a huge problem. I think we need to take a closer look, but first, welcome to another episode of The Ant Keeper, where I upload every week about all things ant related. If you find yourself enjoying this video, then subscribe and join the AK Colony. Your support really helps me out and I really appreciate it. At the time of recording this episode, I have 1,420 subscribers so far. Thank you to all of you. You are awesome. Also, last week I asked you, what Queen Anne should we get next? So many of you had great suggestions, some of which really surprised me. You voted on which ants you would like to get next. Keep watching to find out what ants made it to the top 5 finalists. In ant keeping, there are some discoveries that excite your senses. Like finding a queen ant in the wild, or unboxing a package full of new queen ants and colonies that's just been delivered to your house. Or even checking up on the colony to find the queen has laid more eggs. But there are some discoveries that you never want to find. This week, I made a discovery that made me feel sick. Mites. Whilst recording some footage for a recent video, I noticed that one of our colonies has mites. The more I looked, the more I noticed, until I realized the entire nest was infested with hundreds if not thousands of mites crawling around everywhere. I instantly questioned myself, where did these mites even come from? And wondered how these pests would actually affect our colonies. Would the colonies even survive? With such an outbreak, it didn't look good. I knew that I needed to do some research and better understand what we're up against. I learned that mites are actually arachnids, that is they have 8 legs and are often separated into two classes, predators or parasites. The parasitic mite feeds primarily on the blood of the host until the host dies. Often even several mites can be on the same ant at the same time, ultimately bringing the ants to devastation much quicker. In fact, some ant keepers have recorded losing their affected colony just days after discovering the very first signs of mites. However, there is another type of mite, a furotic mite, which is a hitchhiker that does not feed during its time on the host. Rather, these traveling mites are mostly species that reproduce rapidly and quick to colonize in new habitats. They feed on waste products and uneaten food of the ants, and they let go of the ants or whatever they use to travel and forage on the ground. Once the food source has been consumed, they eventually die out, or move on. It seems that phoratic mites don't attack living creatures, like our ants. In fact, these mites might actually be helpful to our colony, helping prevent mold from generating. With this research, we can better understand what we're up against. So the question is, what type of mite do we have here? Are these blood-sucking mites, or phoratic mites, that are eating the garbage that the ants leave behind? To find out, I quickly collected a couple of samples and sent them off to an entomologist. An entomologist is a person that studies insects. Hopefully with their help, we can get an identification which will help us understand how to treat these pests. Until then, we need to better understand how widespread these mites are, and maybe we can figure out where they came from. AK Colony? It seems that these mites are well established in many of our ant nests and outworlds. However, when we look closer, it seems the mites are keeping to themselves. It's almost like they're foraging on the ground. I can't actually see any mites attached to the ants. Hmm, these could be phoratic mites after all. Last week, I asked you all to decide on which ant will be next to add to our collection. You could pick any queen ant or colony as long as it's from Australia. You all had great ideas and awesome suggestions. Let's look at the most popular ants. The top 5 most liked or suggested ants will be finalists for everyone to vote on in the community tab. I don't have video of all of these ants, so you're going to have to put up with pictures instead. The trapjaw ant was one of the most liked suggestions. 
These ants are unique for having a special mandible that opens 180 degrees and shuts closed in an instant. I would definitely love to get this ant. It's actually on my list of dream ants to keep. Could you imagine having a colony of these? Moving on to another popular idea is the commonly known honeypot ant. I've actually considered getting this ant recently. A few months ago, I was quite sick in hospital and couldn't convey to the shop owner quick enough that I wanted to buy one of these queen ants. Since then though, I've been researching how to look after this ant properly, since like the green weaver ant, they are very hard to keep in captivity. These ants are famous for the specialized workers known as repletes. The repletes act as a social stomach, kind of like a fridge for everyone. The repletes abdomens expand to a huge size, storing sweet food for another day. I think this is one of my favorite ants in the world. I love this idea. Speaking of repletes, the spider ant was another extremely popular suggestion. Not a lot is known about the spider ants, with very few even owning a colony of these special, special ants. I would do almost anything to have one of these ants in our collection. The Mimicia brevinoda was another idea some of you had. This ant is known for being the biggest ant species in Australia. Personally, I would love to have more Mimicia species in our collection. These bulldog ants are beasts and would be so interesting to watch. The Fidoli and Polyrachis genaria was a common favorite amongst many commenters. If you've watched some of my other videos, which I know you have, and I know you have subscribed since we're talking about you, you'd know that I'm a big fan of the Polyrachis genus. Though Fidoli took me by surprise as a popular suggestion though. Although the rapid growth of a smaller ant is a lot of fun to watch, especially if I added a heat cord to the nest to promote even faster progression. These are some of the suggestions, but not certainly all of them. I'll pick out the top five most liked ideas and post them for you all to vote on the community tab. Here, the most liked ant will be selected to be part of our collection. There is a catch though. Some of these ants are really, really hard to find in either the wild or to buy online. It's possible that the winning ant could be one that I can't even buy, even if I wanted to. If that happens, I'll choose the second ant. Or better yet, if you know someone who has one of these top 5 ants for sale, please message me on Instagram at theantkeeper for me to buy. If you do have one of these special ants or colonies for sale, I would love to know about it. Don't forget to vote for your favorite ant to be a part of our collection. I wonder what ant will win. Since I first discovered these mites, I've spent some time considering where they may have come from. I think there are several potential ways that mites could have entered our collection. It's possible the mites could have somehow wandered inside on their own from the outside. Although I feel this is quite unlikely since the ants are kept inside at all times and that's quite a trek for such a tiny creature. These mites could have been carried by a cricket that I bought from a pet shop. I feel like this is the most likely cause for the outbreak, although I'm not certain. It could be that the mites could have been lying dormant and recently had a population explosion. Wherever they came from, I have a pretty good idea on how to treat them until we get an ID from an expert. Until then, lemon juice seems to be one of the favorite choices for treating mites amongst ant keepers for its high level of acidity. The idea is that the ants will use the lemon juice to kill the mites. I don't know if it's going to work, but I'll try anything to help these girls out. Originally, I was hoping to quarantine the affected ants, but it seems the vast majority of our collection are affected by these mites. In the future, to help stop an outbreak like this happening again, I plan on continuing to use ant safe soils and sands, alongside protein sources that are least likely to harm any of our ants. In addition, I'm now going to quarantine any new ants that enter our collection, and use different tweezers when feeding these new colonies. In the next video, I'll update you with how these colonies are faring with the mite outbreak. If you made it this far, then make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. It really helps me out. Also, have you subscribed and become part of the AK colony? If you haven't, then what are you waiting for? Come on, press the button already. Subscribe and be a part of one of the fastest growing colonies here on YouTube. Don't forget to vote on which of the top 5 ants is your favorite. Remember, you get to decide on what ants we get next. Thank you everyone for watching this week's episode. I'll see you on the next video. Until then, Ant Keepers Unite.